Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to On Cashflow, where I help you become a master of your own cash flow. Now let's get started. Okay, the amount of $10,000 is an arbitrary number, but there is a point to that. And the point is that keeping too much money in cash is probably not a good idea. And I have a few good options for you on what to do with your extra cash. Let's say if you have some extra cash laying around in your checking account, or if you have some extra cash laying around in your savings account. And the first good option I have for you is that you can take that money and you can use it to pretty much permanently reduce an expense that you have. So for example, you can take some extra cash and you can spend it on something that's going to, let's say, make your home more energy efficient. It can save you money on you know, electricity, gas, or water, or something like that. Another option is you could take that money and you can spend it on something that you usually rent. Let's say if you go kayaking quite often and you rent a kayak every time and it's $30 each time, instead if you bought a $300 kayak, how many times do you have to go in order to pay for it? The same might apply if you're doing something else like maybe you go bowling pretty often and you have to rent the shoes. Maybe it, what if you had your own shoes? What if you bought your own shoes? What if you go skiing and you rent your skis every time? What if you bought the skis instead? You can think of it that way. Instead of renting, if you buy something, how many times do you have to use it before you pretty much save that money? And then of course we have some of the classic ones here that where you can do something at home home rather than go out to do it. You could buy a coffee maker, make coffee at home rather than go to a coffee shop, buy some hair clippers, cut your own hair rather than have to go to a barber. You can buy workout equipment. You can work out at home rather than have to go to a gym. So any kind of thing that's going to permanently reduce an expense that you have, you could take that money, you could spend it on that, and it would be a good use of that money rather than if it was just sitting in your checking account. And by the way, the reason why I'm making this video is that I was actually inspired by another video by Chris Invest. So he made a video similar to this where he talked about where to put your extra money okay and this is kind of just adding on to that video so you definitely do need to hit watch his video but I'll mention it again at the end of this one next I want to give you another great option on what to do with that extra money that you might have and that is that you can use it to actually get a tax deduction so if you have some extra money sitting in your account and you have a few extra thousand dollars why not put it into an account that's going to give you a tax deduction so for example this is going to be like a traditional IRA if you're self-employed it could be a SEP IRA if you have an eligible health insurance plan then this could could also be an HSA. All of those are going to give you a tax deduction. Uh, well, actually an adjustment to your income on your schedule one, which is going to reduce your adjustable gross income, which is going to reduce your tax bill ultimately. So if you could take that extra few thousand dollars and put it into one of those accounts and get a tax deduction, that is a pretty good use of that money because you're not getting a tax deduction if it's just sitting in your checking account. I still continue to do this, even though I am now, you know, semi-retired, I still continue to put money into an HSA because right now I have an eligible health insurance plan and I want to get that tax deduction by putting money into that HSA. So even I have put in $3,650 per person times two this year, which is $7,300 into my HSA. So yes, if you have some extra money, why not use it to get a tax deduction? And by the way, if your checking account is positive, then make sure that you like this video because that means that you can take advantage of some of these options here. And if your account is negative, then maybe you should go and take care of that first and then come back and like the video. <laughs> but seriously, like the video, please, if you're enjoying it so far. It really does help me out and I would really appreciate that. Now let's get on to the next option I have for you. And the next option is you can take that extra money that you have and you can use it to make more money. And more specifically, I think a good option is you could take that money and you can go get a certification or you can go get licensure in some field that you're interested in or a field that you work in. And you can use this because by having certifications and licenses, it can open up opportunities for you to earn more income. And if you want to achieve financial independence, having a higher income is going to make it a lot easier. And this could be used for maybe switching careers, switching jobs by getting you know a new credential or a new license, or it could just be used in your existing field. It could be used to you know improve your career in whatever you're working in now, the company you're working in, the field you're working in right now. And even I, as a you know semi-retired person over here, I still actually pay for training, specifically when it comes to you know YouTube training. I have an online subscription that I pay an annual fee for. So I'm constantly learning as well and trying to improve my skills here on YouTube and trying to increase my income and all that kind of stuff. So if I'm doing it, you should be doing it too. <laughs> really quick, I wanna know from you in the comments below, how much money do you keep in cash, like in your checking account, in your savings account? I personally, I only keep like three months of living expenses, just about that in cash total. Everything else is pretty much going to be invested or put to use somewhere else. I'm curious to know how much cash you keep. Please let me know in the comments below how much you have and why you keep that in cash. 
But moving on to the next option that I have for you here is you can take that extra money that you have and you can make some bulk purchases for something that you are going to buy anyway. And the reason that you might want to do that is first off, you get to lock in the price of whatever it is at this time when you buy that item. And second off, you can get a better price if you're buying stuff you know, in larger quantities because the per unit price is going to be lower. So I personally do this with many of my like non-perishable things, you know, deodorant and toothpaste and paper towels and all that kind of stuff. And I usually do this in one year time frames. You know, I'm not buying like 10 years worth of stuff or anything like that, but I just buy, you know, the largest quantity with the best price possible for what I want to buy. And that's usually lasts, you know, anywhere between like a year or two. And I think it can be a really good strategy, you know, when it comes to those non-perishables, when it comes to, you know, food that you keep in your pantry, when it comes to consumables, because you're locking in those lower prices and you're getting a lower per unit price. And then another option that I have for you on what to use that extra cash for is take it and put it into some kind of real property, not fake property. <laughs> no, really real property. What that means is this can come in many different shapes and forms, but usually it's going to mean you can use it as a down payment on a rental property. You can use it as a down payment on a vacation property, or maybe even it could be something like raw land. Maybe you plan on building a home one day and you can go and you can take that money and put it into land that's going to be suitable for what you want to do one day. The point is that it's probably probably better served if you're putting it into real property rather than if you're just going to keep it in cash. And of course, there are many other things that you can put your money to use for if you have some extra money. And that's why in order to complete this video, you do need to make sure that you watch Chris Invest's video where he also talks about where to put some extra money that you have. And I specifically did not cover the same thing in this video, okay? I kind of added on to his list. So make sure you watch his video. Okay, it's gonna pop up on the screen right next to me and it'll be a link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'm Zach from Uncash and I hope to see you next time.